Hi everybody, welcome back to OC Avery for part three of our Natives and Norwich Zoom Room with Joe Daly. Today we're going to be looking at breeding yellow hammers and his experiences breeding yellow hammers. Remember, yellow hammers are also known as yellow buntings and these techniques and various ideas will apply to other bunting species. So hopefully you can pick up some tips from today's video. Hopefully you do find it useful as well if this is a species you're looking at keeping in the future. Now I'd like to say a huge thank you to Joe for obviously coming on and sharing his knowledge and experience and thank you to Avian World Dublin for sponsoring the Natives and Norwich. Please, before this episode, subscribe down below. Let's hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Yellow hammers, you've had yellow hammers uh, and, and bred them in the past. So they're not all too common compared to the likes of greenies. You know, not many people have them. You don't see very many at all on the show bench. So what advice would you give to people starting with this species? Well, with the yellow hammers, you know, you have to have, start off with a, a reasonably good, a good boards as well. You know, but it's, you have to really settle them down. Some of them can be quite mad and you'd see them even on the bench unless they're steady. They're really no good, you know. Yellow hammers, there's a couple of faults with them as well. Even though you may breed them, I bred them before and with their sort of splayed feet, you know, yeah. from lack of calcium. But I went down to a local chemist down the road, Paddy Barry, when he's alive, and he made up a calcium mixture for me, like a powder with a fortified calcium. So I put the chandlers in them. I normally put the ch chandlers into the, I used to put them into the the meal, the, the dog bone, you know, and, and the, the, um, just to clean them and sawdust and then I just sprinkle them with this calcium powder on them and they that within two three days they were straight up yellow hammers were bang yeah I what I did when the perch was I just pushed the nest down a little bit so to make them get up so when, once they once they got up for feed and then they, they turned out perfect but it's just a little deficiency in them that can be missing yeah. you, know, you know it's only and lucky I copped it at an early age because as they were growing the calcium went straight into them yeah, I presume that, that that lack of calcium is obviously going to be they turn into uh, pretty much a soft in the breeding season, to my understanding. Yeah, there's a, a yeah. Lot, quite a lack of calcium in a lot of live foods, so it does make sense yeah. that a calcium supplement is rather an important thing. And the, the, the legs will the legs will turn in, you know, and you wonder why he's not that she has yeah. to go down into the nest to feed him, he's not rising. So just watch, it's just something to watch for with them, you know, yeah. as regards steadying them down and that you just, you just have to work on them. There's a lot of work to them to getting them right, you know, yeah. but like, it's just perseverance, Ollie, that's the way it is. Just keep at it, you know? Yeah. But so, they, they, yeah, on, they do well on the bench. A good cock will do well on the bench. Yes. Yeah. You know, decent, good drop of the bib, nice black V, you know, steady working the purchase. You know, some guys turn them out well, like, beaks clean beaks nails everything else maybe silk them up their straightens on the back you know and get them get them really shiny for the for that for the show yeah fantastic steadiness yeah and I, I know that i mean i've had them in the past i've had both ends where you've got this bird that's really quite uh you know quite steady and will almost take life food out of your hands and others that will hate it in a cage uh yeah. so yeah i guess you got a way to work with them get them to that steadiness for the show bench now um, what sort of size flight or, or cage are you breeding them in? Well, I used, I used to breed them back in the 80s in flights. And then I reconfigurated the boardroom to put in hybrid cages and mullein cages. So I didn't have the big flights, but the chappies, the brambles and the yellow hammers, they do take up quite a lot of room. They do need space. And sometimes they don't work in a mixed aviary, especially with bramble finches and everything you'll end up with something fighting with something and it doesn't look good. If you have the space, a single Avery, even if it's six by six, three foot wide, that will work. Yeah. That would be work for them. But they do take room. Fair enough. That's um, So so just w w with that, with the flights then, um, are you, when, when you've previously bred them, are you filling the flight full of sort of plants and, and things like that? Or are you leaving it relatively bare with a bit of cover? No, just a bit of cover. Two, two big lumps of yeah, header and just a bit of their landy covering her over. They do like it, you know. Mostly the yellow hammers will build the nest with, with grasses and like small fine bits of hay. It's quite a nice, it's like a blackboard nest, but it's quite compact. It's quite yeah. nice for the, the brambles and moss, cotton wool. They're devils for cotton wool. They love cotton wool. That you know, you actually, I've seen bramble nests on the floor. They build it like a crater on the floor. Right. Wow. So <laughs> they, they can go anywhere. Yeah. Know? But the, the brambles are 
they're an experience in, in itself, you know. I had them, um, I had, I used to breed them and I had a bad experience with them one year. I was coming home and I had, I had a good few of them out on the perch, um, going through the molt, molt, and I went in and I got some, I bought some chandlers in a fishing shop. Right. And he went, I had them out on the counter in the sun and back into the fridge and back up, and they, had, they were full of botulism. I fed them to my young brahmas. I lost 14 that year. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I was. Oh, I, do. I remember going down to a, to a pal of mine there, McQueen, and I had them laid down. And who came in on young Welsh? Poor old nearly cried <laughs> looking at them, you know, and yeah. they were all coloured. I had some actually particularly good cockboards there as well. But with the brambles, you need to give them about two years, you know, to see, right. we'll see will that apron drop on them. The head gets darker and they will get walkings on the side. They get spangles down the flanks. Yeah. And they really do look fabulous when they're in full colour in, in, their, in their summer breeding condition, you know. Fantastic. So um, on that, just with, with the yellow hammers um, at the moment, so live food, what, what sort of variety of live food are you giving them? Well, we used to use chandlers years ago. We used to get right. rabbit skin, put them in a bucket and everything else. We hadn't got the availability of mealworms or buffalo worms or any of that stuff. We do now, but we didn't yeah. in those. And then just in the corner of the AV where you throw your chickweed, just throw in a couple of banana skins into it and wet the chickweed, even though it's rotten away, and just turn it from one corner to the other. And there's plenty of black fly, fruit fly, you know, they, they'll, they'll pick it out themselves. They'll root it out themselves. Right. So it is really giving them that variety and, and yeah. sort of harvesting your own sort of stuff there then. Yeah. But, that's pretty, but when you, if, they're, if they're taking egg food for you, they, they do need that bit of protein, you know? Yeah. Some lads used to get a bit of corned beef and grated into their egg food because corned beef is pure protein just to feed to the young. So yeah. like they do, do you think, but they do like the insect. They do, and it does it does set them off. When you see the live food, something rings in the head. It's time to breed. So you know, and give a regular. Yeah, you know, small off. That's basically the the golden rule there. Brilliant. So, um, yellow hammers. I've I've had various experiences again, but something that seems to be a common theme is having a, a nest site that's rather low down. I've heard that generally about four feet is the right. So how do you present yeah. nest site and what sort of height is that? At? Well, you can, you can just put your Leylandi all the way down, just stuff the, the cover in at the back of it. They'll pick the height they want to go at, you know? Yeah. You do some, you do like a bit of shade. You just go in and it, another thing too, out in the winter time, if you can pick up, if you're going along the hedgerows, if you can pick up a few old blackbird nests, and just put them various places in there, you know, yeah. they'll pick one out. It's much similar to the, you know, and they, they'll dick it up, they'll do it up. And oh, right. In. Brilliant. I didn't, I didn't know if they'd actually take a, a, yeah, a different style nest, but that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah. I like that thought. But black, blackbird's much the same. It's just the Yellowhammer's nest is smaller. Much the same composite of the blackbird's nest, you know. Right. Oh, brilliant. I, is it, there, there are another species that I, I yet, I'm yet to have... Um, to breed so i'd love to have a go at that that's a, that's a really good uh, thought as well so um yellow hammers again so do you, you know do you leave the cock birds in with the hen when she's sort of sat on eggs and rearing or or you you removing him no leave him alone minimum fuss he'll right. sit on the perch he'll sing you'll hear him singing in the evening he's happy when she's sitting on the eggs and as i said to you if you have, if you have a cock bird feeding or help him with the feeding half the battle is won yeah Again. Oh, yeah. you don't like stress either you know most birds don't you know they just yeah you yeah know, and, and, fair enough you know and even even at that i had them i had them out in the perch just branching about 11 12 days and right. the hen gone back down the cock doing all the feeding duties so that shows you how how quick they could they do they do come on the perch earlier than other natives yeah but, so you know they can stand them very early Right. I have noticed that with a lot of the, um, the the birds that do take more more life food is that they do seem to be that little bit earlier on the purchase. So yeah, yeah that, that that that's great. So um, well, that's just fantastic. It, again, something that's not very oftenly uh, kept. So well, yellow hammers on the show bench. Then um, th there's a bit of a debate whether do you or do you not uh, color feed them. Do you color feed yellow hammers? I did. Um, a very, very small amount. If you overdo it, they go a bronze on you. That's yeah. the difference. And you will you, you don't even know you're burning them. 
and you can. But then again, natural food, if the yellow bird is in them, you know, just plenty of bats. The yellow will come out and okay, you can go the line and the sturgeon leaves and all this carry on. You know, but natural food is better. I think yeah. once you go down, you, you, you really do, you know yellow hammers have to be colour fed with the bronze marks on them. And if you do them too much, you, you won't see the yellow. Yeah. The spot. Got you. Because I, I have heard that there's, um, you know, a, a lot of, well, some people go and prefer that orange in a yellow hammer to get that yeah. little bit of caramel red in there and, and get them orange. And I guess it's, I guess it's almost down to a judge and what they prefer. Uh, but interesting to hear that, you know, you don't really bother with that too much. Uh, and no. go down, you know, the wild food. Yeah, I, I did, I did colour them, and you, you, you bronze them. You bronze them too yeah. much for my life. Right. So I just go the natural route. Yeah, that that's that's fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. So hopefully you have enjoyed part three, which just take us to the end of our Zoom room call. Now, if you would like to see the full episode, which is about 45 to 50 minutes long, let me know in the comment. I'd be interested to see if you would like to or you prefer to see them in these broken up sections. If you have enjoyed today's video anyway, please be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any more of my future content. Remember, we're aiming for 10,000 before the end of the year and smash a like on this video if you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.